Hello and, hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a vendor fraud using conditional formatting, a minor data visualization, and the pivot table. This topic could be covered in an introduction to data analytics and accounting, or simply data analytics course, auditing, internal auditing, or external auditing, managerial accounting for internal control purposes. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, tax, and Excel tutorial. If you like my tutorial, please like them, share them. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe to the channel. If they help you, it means they might help other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education, to have access to those Excel files, and especially to study for your CPA exam, CMA exam, enrolled agent, and your accounting courses. I strongly suggest you check out my website. So to illustrate this concept, we're going to be working with this fictitious file where we have accounts payable, clerk na name, the vendor, the invoice amount, the invoice date, and the payment. And this could be a large file, thousands of files that we are working with. It doesn't matter or hundreds. One of the most common or classic fraud scheme is when the accounts payable clerk and the vendor form an unusual relationship. What happens is the vendor will get preference treatment in terms of payment or discounts from the accounts payable clerk and in, in return the vendor will give some sort of a bribery or some sort of kickback to the vendor after the accounts payable clerk all this happening at the expense of the company so we're going to try to see to find out if there's any unusual relationship between the accounts payable clerk and the vendor so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, since we have the invoice date and the payment date we're going to find out how many days it's taken us to pay vendors so basically if we take the difference between the invoice date and the payment date notice here for example the payment date was february the 22nd the invoice was february the 1st and we see it's taken 21 days to pay so first we're going to compute days to pay and we're going to we're going to just going to take this formula and scroll down so we have it for all the data so we can measure days to pay so that's one way to start our analysis because that's relevant if if we are paying this vendor early, it means we might be giving them some pre preference treatment because cash is king. The company wants to preserve cash. The company wants to delay the cash payment as, as much time as possible. And the vendor at the same time, they want to accelerate the payment as early as possible. So is there any unusual relationship between the two? So the first thing we're gonna look at is just gonna look at an overview about the, vent, the accounts payable clerk, vendors, and amount. First, let's see if the vendors are buying a lot from a certain vendor. That's the first thing we wanna look at before we look at the days to pay. So how do we do so? We're gonna create um, the, we're gonna be using the pivot table. Now, if you don't know how to use the pivot table, please look in the uh, in the description or in the, uh, in the card above here in the video and it, you'll have access to all the videos so i'm going to go to pivot table and select the range it, it automatically select the range for the sheet because my sheet is ready and complete i'm going to do a new worksheet and i'm going to select the accounts payable clerk which is the name of my clerk adam ashley avi bala so on and so forth i'm going to look at the vendor and the vendor amount and i'm going to put the vendor as column this way it looks it, 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 it's it's what I really wanted to see, the uh, the accounts payable clerk versus the vendor in the amount. So this is the table that I built. Now again, tables and dollar amount, oftentimes they're not as useful. So what you want to do, you want to turn this into a percentage and there are many ways you can do that. So one way I'm gonna do so, if I'm gonna turn those numbers into percentages to find out if the, if, the uh, the dollar amount is uh, are concentrated for one vendor if there's any special relationship it is, it appears if there's any special relationship between one vendor and the account payable clerk a certain account payable clerk so i'm going to click in here anywhere and i'm going to set the value to percentage of column total so turn everything into a percentage it's way better because it's going to show you the size now again this is not going to give me much what i'm going to be restoring to now is kind of uh, a minor a minor uh, a minor feature 
of data visualization. So this is I can, can I can select all this data. I can go to home conditional formatting. And what I want to do is I want to look at color scales and the color scale I'm going to be using is the red, yellow and green because we're all familiar with red, yellow and green. And I'm going to select this. And what's going to happen is this. It's going to look at my data and it's going to show me the color. And if 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 if, if a percentage is large, more than 50 percent, well, it's going to show it in darker than the others. And if a number that's very large, like 100 percent maximum, it's going to show it to me in red. And notice here, it seems bill bill our account, um, our accounts payable bill buys the only person that buys from SLC Inc. That's unusual. Why? Why aren't other accounts payable clerk buying from SLC Link? Also, we can see that Justin uh, buys almost 60 percent, 58 percent from Dizzy, 58 percent. But also we have to we also we only have Justin and Maggie. So this is what we have from the screen. That that doesn't mean much. We just have maybe we want to look at this a little bit further. But now we know that bills is concentrated at with slc inc so let's see if there's any if there's any unusual relationship between bill and slc inc the next thing i'm going to look at if i'm going to i'm going to be creating a pivot table to find out how many days it's taken to pay slc uh, slc inc so i'm going to go back to my information and come to my original information insert pivot table i'm going to do the same thing for now i'm going to do the accounts payable clerk uh, the vendor and I'm gonna put the vendor as column and I'm gonna measure it by the days to pay because this is what I'm measuring some of the days it's not it's useless I want to know the average days it's taken to pay a vendor so I'm gonna click on value field setting here and I'm gonna be looking at the average I can also do so from from here okay but now I need to reformat this so it makes more sense because it's per days let me reformat this and take out all the zeros format and number, you know, decimal, because it stays, it doesn't make any sense. I formatted my data. Now, remember, I'm looking for bill here. I'm looking for bill. And I'm looking for bill and the relationship between bill and SLC. If you remember, we we identified that SLC could be a suspicious transaction. So let's take a look. So bill, it takes bill 32 days on average to pay his vendors but he's paying SLC in 14 days. So I see something unusual here. Now I can also do a data vis visual visualization as well. Let me just kind of show you what I can, you know, it's gonna, this is why this is a powerful tool because it shows you immediately if there's anything unusual. So if I look at this, let me go to conditional formatting again, because I know what I'm looking for, but let's assume there's something else I'm not seeing. Let's go to home data visualization, uh, conditional formatting, um, red, yellow, and green, click on it. Notice here it's very low. So Bill is paying SLC very quickly. It's taking Bill, it's cutting the check every two weeks. However, on average, Bill pays the employees, every th uh, the vendors every 32 days. The company pays on average 36 days. Notice here, the company on average, let me just highlight it in, maybe write something here so here's what i'm here's what i'm looking at i'm seeing that on average the company pays on average 36 days you know uh, we notice here that tom pays on average 19 days um 15 days it pays uh, journeys in 15 days and facade llc in 37 days also this is made might be a little bit unusual why 115 why 137 but definitely, definitely, Bill, if his average payment is 32 days, why is he paying SLC in 14 days? So that this is this is unusual. Also, we see here Bala 25 days, but uh, 29 days on average. Others others are 38 days. So if we look here, we see that on average. So this is also a little bit unusual. Why is he paying cool entertainment? Maybe maybe cool entertainment do give us a discount and that's why we pay early. I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm just saying those are the things we, sh we, we should be looking at. Also, Adam pays cool entertainment a little bit early, 27 days, and his average, on average, it, stay, it takes Adam 42 days to pay his bill. But I'm gonna be focusing specifically 
on SLC Inc. the 14 days. Once I know that's the case, I can click on it. And here's the all the invoices from SLC. If I'm doing this investigation, the first thing I do, I'm going to look for duplicate. So I'm going to highlight the invoice amount and see if there's any duplicate payments because duplicate payments are the first are the first sign of something, you know, some, something could be wrong. It doesn't mean we may not have duplicate values. So I'm going to click on conditional formatting and go to duplicate values and it's going to highlight my duplicate values. So I have two duplicate values one check for amount 273 twice and one for 405 now they're on a different dates that's fine they're on different dates but what what's the possibility that we're buying the same amount that we're being invoiced the same amount it could be the case but it could be suspicious that we're cutting two checks for the same bill um is that could be the case that there's fraud going on we're, we're just basically double billing the company and paying the invoice twice is that the case or not well that's a starting point in our investigation what else can i look at uh, in terms of uh, in terms of average days if there's anything unusual i mean this is this is for you but this is where this is the starting point of the investigation so notice here we use the pivot table we use conditional formatting conditional formatting is very powerful either to identify the duplicate real quick and identify the duplicate checks the duplicate amount the duplicate amount that doesn't mean they're really duplicate they could be legitimate but you can find a duplicate and the pivot table help us organize the data in a way that make sense to us so make sure if you don't know how to use conditional formatting if you don't know how to use the pivot table i do have tutorial you you really want to be comfortable with these items and this is basically a minor form of data visualization minor minor just coloring this is basically a coloring scheme going through conditional formatting um, as always i would like to remind you to check out my website for additional resources especially if you are accounting student or cpa candidate farhatlectures.com provide additional resources for you to succeed in your education especially pass your professional certification exam stay safe and good luck